Hi everybody and welcome to this morning's lesson. Today we focus on grammar every morning at 8.45 and recently we started looking at modal verbs and today we continue with the topic of modal verbs. Specifically, we move to requests, offers, invitations, suggestions and obligations. How to make sentences, how to make speak in English in relation to these particular situations. So today we continue in the next step in relation to modal verbs and little by little we try to complete this topic and we try to continue every day with different grammar topics. So thank you for joining live and thank you for watching recorded as well. Welcome if you are new and thank you everybody for returning again. Subtitles are available. If you want to follow my lesson with subtitles, I suggest you select the option and you can see the vocabulary I am using word for word and hopefully this will help you understand my lesson better. If you have a question during the lesson, please put your question in the Facebook chat in a comment and I can answer your question during the lesson and also after the lesson I can answer any comments or questions that you make during the class. If you want to contact me on social media, you can see all the channels here. There's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest and WhatsApp. So if you want to follow me on any of those channels, you are welcome to use all the information here and you can easily contact and connect with me there. My schedule this week is very similar compared to last week and today we obviously are on Friday morning speaking about grammar. Next we move to the topic of IELTS at 10.15 and this will do, we will do another exercise from the exam in relation to IELTS and that is very interesting at 10.15. At 11.45 today, we look at some speaking and always I encourage you to send some speaking for me to correct and today maybe I will use something from YouTube or something from online to try and analyse and correct people's speaking in relation to English. So you're welcome to follow me on any of the le lessons that you can and you can see all the information here as well. Okay, so let's begin. And first we look at the page, but let me show you one more thing. And this is my advertisement. So everything is free. All the lessons are completely free and for the public. And I think this is a fantastic project. It's very good, but I have my costs. I have my expenses. So I am obviously looking for your support. You can contact and make a subscription to me with the bank or PayPal if you can but I'm also contacting companies and businesses in relation to education who might want to support my project and maybe fund my project as well. And in return, I can advertise your company here during the lesson as well and speak about your business to everybody that might want to, that might be watching the lesson as well. So that's a possibility and hopefully I can get some support for this. Okay, let's begin. Here you can see the website, and this website is my favorite website for grammar. Of course, you probably know already, if you have been watching this lesson, these lessons every day, you know I use this website a lot. It's the British Council website, specifically the Learn English section of the British Council website. And for me, it's fantastic to learn grammar. Grammar usually is difficult. Grammar usually is boring. Grammar usually requires a lot of time and a lot of concentration. And I agree, I think that is the truth. You need to study yourself. You definitely need to educate and study yourself from a grammar book. Of course, you can buy a grammar book in the shop. You can go online and you can find all the grammar rules online. I recommend the British Council and the Cambridge Grammar website are fantastic sources for information. Some books and some websites have different perspectives of grammar in general, but the majority is the same in every source. 
so it's important that you read your grammar and that you study grammar yourself my lesson this lesson is just to encourage you and just to help you a little so this is very boring but my job is to try and be here and try to support you in that way little by little because it's necessary that you continue studying yourself all the time okay and this is a very good place and a very good website to use and I can try to help just to support you along the way I suppose so let's begin and today we speak specifically about making a request making an offer or making an invitation as well of course these contexts are very very common we make requests all the time all the time in English you are requesting something you are asking people to do something you are always making a request in English so this is a very important area because it's part of English every day making requests making requests all the time so today we we show the modal verbs that we use when making a request okay an offer also offers are a big part of English every day we make offers all the time simple offers more advanced offers complicated offers business offers social offers all the time you make offers in English and we use modal verbs to use and create offers and today we look at this uh, way to create offers in English finally invitations yes also it's an important area in English because we make invitations frequently in English you invite your friend for a party you invite your friend for a coffee you invite your friend for a holiday to visit so invitations are a big part of English requests are a big big part of English offers are a big part of English and we use modal verbs to create these sentences remember the modal verbs can could may might should ought to must have to would will we have nine or ten different modal verbs and modal verbs are very important for requests offers and invitations today so let's begin learn how to use different modal verbs to make requests offers and invitation invitations and also do the exercises to practice them in this website we have some very good interactive exercises as well that are very important and very useful as well so I get comfortable so let's begin with requests okay and basically for a request we use could you and would you as polite ways of telling or asking somebody to do something so of course this is a very important part of English because every day in your family with your friends in your job you always need to tell somebody to do something and you always need to ask somebody to do something in a polite way and the polite way to ask you or to request you to do something is the structure could you or would you the same so I request to you could you watch my English lesson today could you leave a comment in my English lesson today could you share my video with another person who's learning English that's my request to you so that's polite and exactly the same as possible for me would you comment during my video would you watch my English lesson would you share my English lesson with a friend who's learning English again a request from me to you and it's a polite way to make the request and here we have two examples could you take a message please so this is polite and the structure is could you and the instruction is take a message so could you take a message please you can see can and will are possible it's definitely possible to say 
can you take a message please but can is considered a little less polite it is more direct when you're making a request okay so can and will are possible to make a request but can and will are less polite and it's important it is important to remember this so the sentence is could you take a message please can you take a message please will you take a message please could is more polite and that is very important because you want to be respectful depending on the situation well always you want to be respectful i suppose but it's important to know which words are more respectful and which words are not so respectful a little less polite for example would you carry this for me is the same as could you carry this for me can you carry this for me will you carry this for me so there's lots of flexibility so don't worry too much because it's very flexible you have different options but just remember that would and could are more polite can and will are a little more direct that's the only real important thing to remember okay look at this example can you take a message it's more direct and less polite will you carry this for me is a little maybe a little rude okay and that's interesting to know the difference so because sometimes when you are very direct you are very rude this is upsetting for the other person the other person becomes upset or angry okay now that was to make a request and now we make an offer very similar very very similar but you make an offer to somebody or you make an invitation or you send an invitation to somebody as well and in this situation for an offer we use can I to make an offer okay so I offer to you can I help you that's my offer to you can I bring my book to the class can I contact your company it's an offer and a request it's, it's very similar to a request very very similar but you can see here can I help you this is making an offer I am offering to help you can I help you okay it is possible may may I help you and um, but just for the moment we begin with can I help you and that's possible to make an offer okay the next one can I do that for you it's basically the same can I help you can I carry your bag for you can I do that for you is very nice way to make an offer okay also we can use shall I and shall is a modal verb but it's more polite and it's more formal definitely more formal okay and for example can I help you it's possible shall I help you and this also is an offer shall I help you could I help you may I help you might I help you to be honest in real life in real English spoken most modal verbs are possible here and people understand you are offering to help okay so let's continue shall I help you shall I do that for you and here is the same shall I help you with that shall I call you on your mobile will I call you on your mobile can I call you on your mobile so not very strict but just important to read okay sometimes <clears throat> we can sometimes say I can or I could or I will to make an offer so when you make an offer I can do that for you if you like okay that's very famous very typical I can collect the children for you it's an offer I can do that for you I can cut your grass I can clean the room it's my offer with the modal verb can can normally is for ability remember I can play the piano I can run a marathon it's my ability but in this situation it's also used to make an offer and that's important next could is also used to make an offer 
and for example I could give you a lift to the station and a lift is very important vocabulary it's related to the car and transporting another person to a place so a lift to give a person a lift in the sense of a car is transport number one you bring the person to another place number one number two to give a person a lift is completely different and this is emotional so you give the person a boost or a lift and therefore a lift is like a boost or an increase in confidence to make the person feel better to give a person a boost okay and just I make the text a little bit bigger so everybody can see and very interesting vocabulary but in this particular case it's related to the car to bring the person by car next I will do that for you if you like so first I will do that for you is a affirmation it's something you promise but if you like becomes the offer it's an offer so you can say no you can say yes so it's very important if you like because I will do that for you is more of a statement and more of an affirmation it's a comment that might be true but it's necessary to make the offer if you like if you want okay next I will give you a lift to the station is a comment it's an affirmation it's positive but also it's an offer and this is the point it's possible to use I can I could or I will when you're making an offer okay and that's an interesting part next we use would you like to for invitations would you like to come round tomorrow so basically this is the phrasal verb to come round and basically the significance is to visit would you like to visit tomorrow would you like to come over tomorrow so the verb to come is typical with prepositions come round come over come in to invite the person to your location okay so here the structure is would you like for an invitation plus the verb would you like to have some dinner would you like to go for a walk would you like to play some football would you like to play some computer games invitation 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 okay and again the next one would you like another drink it's an invitation an offer a type of an offer so the two of them are very similar to an offer so an offer and an invitation are very similar in the context in this in the significance and the concept of the offer and the concept of the invitation so basically they're very similar next we move to level advanced if you have a question please put your question in the Facebook chat and I can check your question during the lesson or probably after the lesson I can respond to your comment okay level advanced it's possible to use you must or we must for a very polite invitation this is very interesting and very important because it's very true and every day it's possible for example you must come around and see us normally 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 must is obligation so you have no choice you must come and see us Gen generally typically must is obligation you must come and see us and visit us however in advanced English it's possible must is an invitation so basically it's an obligation but really we are inviting you to visit so you must come around and visit us you must um, have some chocolate you must try this chocolate because it's an obligation because it's rude if you do not so basically if you do not visit us it would be considered impolite 
And for this reason, it's a type of an invitation. Excuse me. Next, we must meet again. Normally, it's an obligation, and that's the sense. Yes, it's an obligation to meet. However, it's also the sense of invitation. We must meet again. You are creating the invitation because it's almost an obligation to make the invitation. So it's, it's very similar to an obligation in this situation. Okay, let's try some exercises. And the first exercise is here. Put the questions in the correct group. Okay, so here we have different questions. For example, five or six or eight, eight different questions. And the categories, requests, offers, invitations, two categories, very simple. Is this sentence a request or is the sentence an offer and an invitation? So we must remember. And the first one, would you like to go out tonight? Is that a request or an invitation? What do you think? Would you like to go out tonight? And I give you a moment, take your time and look at the sentences and you can try to do this exercise now. And basically you need to put the sentence in the correct category of a request or a offer, an invitation. Okay, so take one moment and I take a drink of water as well. Okay, so the first one, would you like to go out tonight to the cinema, to the bar, to the restaurant for a walk? This is an invitation, I think, because you are inviting the person for food, for a drink, to the cinema, to party, to walk, to play sport. So for me, this is an invitation. Next, would you help me with my homework? So the first structure was, would you like to go out tonight? So would you was for the invitation. Would you help me with my homework is different because we have the verb to help. Would you help me with my homework? What do you think? For me, I think it's a request. It's possible, absolutely possible. Can you help me with my homework? That's a request. Could you help me with your homework? With my homework, that is a request. More polite, could and would are more polite. Can is more direct. So this is a request and it's a polite request. Okay, next. Can I carry your bag for you? Can normally is ability and permission. Normally, ability and permission. In this case, it's a little different. Can I carry your bag for you? It is a request mm. or an offer. So obviously, an offer is very similar to a request. And I think it's an offer. Let me check. Can I carry, what do you think? Can I carry your bag? for you i think it's an offer it's an offer of help you are offering to help this person and i think it's an offer an invitation so there is a little difference between a request and an offer and an invitation so you must i must be clear between the three first next could you lend me 50 pounds and remember the difference between lend and to borrow very very important difference and the verb to lend is when you have something and you want to give to the other person i lend you my computer i lend you my book and you take my computer you take my book but you return the computer after you are finished or you return the book after you borrow the book so can you lend me 50 pounds is a request this is a polite request because the other way to create this polite request is would you lend me 50 pounds? Could you lend me 50 pounds? Can is more direct. Can you lend me 50 pounds is more direct and a little less polite. Okay, next question. Will you be quiet, please? Will you be quiet, please? 
this is a question and it's not an offer it's a request and is it polite not really no it's not polite can and will are not so polite the more polite way is could you be quiet please would you be quiet please is more polite but will you be quiet is more direct and more rude in a way so this is a request can you be quiet please would you be quiet please could you be quiet please will you be quiet please okay next question can you shut that window can is for ability so do you have the ability to close that window yes but this is a question can you shut that window and can to make a question is a little bit direct more polite way is would you shut that window could you shut that window and this is a request again another request invitation not really okay next shall i meet you at the airport and this is the modal verb shall very similar to will and shall i meet you at the airport will i meet you at the airport this is an offer and it's a type of invitation as well so this definitely is a more of an offer a more of an invitation so shall i meet you at the airport is in my opinion an offer and an invitation next would you like a cup of tea would you like a cup of tea could no may no can no very very different so would you like is very specific for an invitation okay so would you like to know or an offer an offer or an invitation would you like to know the information would you like to know the gossip would you like to know the story that is an offer and a type of invitation as well so we have four and four so hopefully this is correct it is definitely possible i have some mistakes of course it's possible i have some errors but let's check the button and finish and everything is great eight from eight super let's continue to the second exercise and it's a different instruction here match the answers with the questions to make eight short conversations so we need to make the question match with the answer and we have eight options and it's important to try and find the correct answer so here are the options no problem what is it yes please that would be lovely sure what do you want to do maybe when could you give it back no that's okay i will get a taxi thank you yes it's rather heavy in a while it's too hot in here yes of course sorry they are the options and the sentences are can i carry your bag for you will you be quiet please would you help me with my homework could you lend me 50 pounds etc etc okay so the first one context can i carry your bag for you can i is a offer it's an offer and it's polite because you're making an offer and um, so this i think clearly is an offer so the context in the options can i carry the bag for you and remember bag is flexible because it's possible i have bags of work and this means you have a lot of work to do if you have bags of work you have a lot of work to do and um, bags under your eyes is another expression and this basically means when you are very tired okay so when you are very tired you have bags under your eyes so if you have no sleep and your eyes you have the here you have the bags like this <laughs> because you're very very tired if you have bags under your eyes it's possible to make a bags of something and this means to make a mess very famous to make a bags of the project to make a bags of the food to make a bags of something 
has the significance to make a mess of something. Very interesting. Also, we have another verb to bagsy. Very, very informal. Very informal, but very typical in Dublin. And the significance is that you demand something, you want something, and you say, you tell everybody, this is mine. I bagsy, it's mine. Not yours, it's mine. I bagsy. I want to put my name to this. Very, very informal as well. So obviously a bag is a very flexible word. And an insult could be maybe a bag, an old bag could be, an angry, rude old man or rude old woman is a bag as well. So that's an insult too. So lots and lots of possible ways to create different contexts with bag. So this context, can I, can I carry your bag for you? What do you think is the most appropriate answer? No problem. What is it? Yes, please. That would be lovely. For me, that fits perfect. Yes, you can carry my bag. That would be fantastic. That would be great. That would be lovely. Sure, what do you want to do? No. Maybe when you, could you get it, give it back? No. No, that's okay. I'll get a taxi. Maybe, maybe that's a possibility as well because it's very difficult to walk and the option is I carry the bag or the option is you get a taxi. So that's another possibility, a little extreme with the imagination. Also, thank you, yes, it's rather heavy. This definitely is a candidate because rather is very important in English and every week I explain the significance of rather. I would rather has the significance prefer. Um, rather than has the significance instead of. And rather plus the adjective has the significance quite. So very, very interesting. For example, rather happy, rather tired, rather hungry has the significance quite happy, quite tired, quite hungry. Rather than has the significance instead of rather than going to the cinema, I will go to the restaurant instead of. I would rather has the significance I would prefer. So in this case, it is the adjective. So the significance is quite heavy. The bag is quite heavy and that fits perfectly as well. So for me, I have three candidates. And it, well, you have the same idea, but we can make the decision now or we can wait until a few more answers. If you want to wait, that's possible to wait as well. But this one is very, very possible because the bag is heavy. So for me, that's probably the most appropriate context. So for the moment, let us select this option. Next, will you be quiet, please? Will you is a request and it's a little direct, a little rude, but it's not polite. Will you be quiet, please? The alternative is, could you be quiet, please? Can you be quiet, please? C would you be quiet? So there's four possibilities. Will you be quiet? Can you be quiet? Would you be quiet? Or uh, could you be quiet, please? So there's four different possibilities. Two of them are polite and two of them are not so polite. So the context. And remember this, the difference in the spelling between quiet and quite, there is a big difference in the way to spell the two. Quiet is no noise and quite is different, like rather. So we must be very careful and very clear with the difference between quiet and quite. So in this situation, it's quiet, no noise. Will you be quiet, please? The context, no problem. What is it? No. Yes, please, that would be lovely. No, sure, what do you want to do? Maybe, so what do you want to do when you're quiet, possibly? Maybe when you, no, no, that's okay, I'll get a taxi, no. In a while, it's too hot in here, no. Yes, of course, sorry. 
So possibly this is the most appropriate answer because the person is apologizing for creating a lot of noise. So the person is apologizing, the person is sorry because the noise is very, very loud and very, very high. So maybe, maybe this is the most appropriate and maybe this is the best option for the context of noise and the context of being quiet. So let's select this one, I suggest. Next context, would you help me with my homework? This is a request. Another possibility is, can you help me with my homework? It's more direct. Could you help me with my homework is more polite. Would you help me with my homework is more polite. Will you help me with my homework is more direct. So the difference between direct and polite is important. So would you help me with my homework? What do you think is the best answer? No problem. What is it? Yes. So what is the homework? I will help you. No problem. Maybe. Yes, please. That would be lovely. No sure what do you want to do that's another definite candidate and that fits very comfortably as well so what do you want to do in your homework maybe could you give it back no so for me i am stuck with the two options no problem what is it what is the homework sure what do you want to do I think it's obvious that he or she wants to do the homework so at the moment i feel a little better with the first option just a little preference for the first option a little okay so no problem what is it and let's put that here next can you lend me 50 pounds can you give me 50 pounds and i will return the money later so the difference between lend and borrow so can you lend me 50 pounds can you give me money and i will return the money to you can you lend me 50 pounds what is the best answer for this context yes please that would be lovely sure what do you want to do maybe when could you give it back no that's okay i'll get a taxi for me there's an obvious answer and this is connected to lend and return the money so the library lend you a book and you return the book after two weeks the bank lend you money and you return the money next month. Return or give back. So give back is a synonym, synonymous way to say return. And because you are lending, that fits absolutely perfect. So maybe when could you give it back? Fits perfectly with this sentence. Okay. Next would you like to go out tonight this is an invitation it's an invitation would you like to watch a movie would you like to walk the dog would you like to come and visit for dinner so invitation 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 and what is the best context for this answer yes please that would be lovely sure what do you want to do so arguably possibly you've two or three possibilities the most relevant i think would be maybe option two so when you go out what do you want to do do you want to go to the cinema do you want to go to the restaurant do you want to go to the bar do you want to play sport so i think the second option might be the most appropriate option for this sentence so let's put that here next shall i meet you at the airport shall is formal and the significance is similar to will shall i meet you at the airport this is an offer and it's a type of invitation and a type of offer so the context for the answer shall i meet you at the airport yes please that would be lovely it's possible no that's okay i'll get a taxi another possibility and the final option no so probably probably the second option is better because in the airport you your friends can collect you or the other option is the metro the bus the train or a taxi so probably the taxi is more appropriate compared to the friend helping to collect that person so i get a taxi i think is maybe more appropriate 
for that sentence. Next, can you shut that window is a request. Remember, can is more direct. Will is also very direct. Will you shut that window? Polite, could you shut that window? Polite, would you shut that window? And this is so important because you want to be careful and respectful when you are speaking in English. So you must know when is very appropriate to be polite and when it's not appropriate to be polite. But I suppose it's it's a very advanced level of English because people understand you and the first part is important for people to understand you not to worry too much so don't worry too much about this so can you shut that window in a while it's too hot in here so the window helps because it's very hot so I don't close the window now I close the window in a little time because I need to keep the window open because it's very hot in here. So I think that's the best and most appropriate answer. Also, this family is very important. Hot, heat, um, to heat. Because a lot of people make this confusion. And here we have the adjective hot. Okay, so the room is very, very hot. And this is the adjective. This word is a little controversial, a little funny and a little f peculiar because in English it's typical with the temperature. So the room is very hot. The temperature is very hot. The weather is very hot. But very typically in culture and maybe in romantic situations, a person can be hot and that's informal to be attractive. This person's very hot. This person is very attractive. And that's another way in very modern culture movies series to say a person is very attractive as well so it is fine it is a, it is a normal word but also it's used in a romantic and attractive sense as well next heat is the noun so it is very important to talk about the heat and this is the substantive and the noun and hot is the adjective. So adjective, noun, and the verb is to heat. To heat the room, to heat your hands, to heat your body, etc., etc. So that's very important. We return to the exercise. Can you close the window? Can you shut the window, please? In a while, it's too hot in here. And finally, would you like a cup of tea is an offer. It's an offer and it's polite, would you like? Remember, offer, polite offer. And the answer is, yes, please. That would be fantastic. A cup of tea would be amazing, would be wonderful. Thank you. So I think that's the correct answer there. It's possible I have some mistakes, but let's check the answers for the mistakes. And eight from eight, very good. So we are happy and it's not necessary to correct anything. So that is the second part. The third is just revision. So the third exercise is only revision and it's not necessary really today. You can do this later if you want to do this one. Excellent, so this was the topic of offers and invitations and also requests. And that was the full lesson today for requests, offers and invitations. Now, we move to a different part and we move to suggestions and obligations. So I think we have time to continue. And this is the second part of today's lesson. A lot of information, a lot of explanation, a lot of grammar. Grammar, as I said, is usually very difficult and very heavy because it requires time. It requires concentration and you need to read a lot of theory for this. So today we continue with suggestions and obligations. Questions, if you have a question, please put your question in the Facebook chat and I can answer any questions that you have during the lesson, but probably after the lesson as well. So let's continue and I just take a little drink of water and you can take a little break as well for one moment. 
Okay. <clears throat> so learn how to use different modal verbs to make suggestions and to speak about obligations with the modal verbs and also to do the exercises to practice them. So learn how to use different modal verbs when we're making suggestions and speaking about obligations and we need to do exercises. So we begin with level beginner for suggestions. Typically, when you make a suggestion in English, the modal verb should is very important. So we use should and shouldn't to make suggestions and give advice. So of course, a very big part of English I make a suggestion to you, I give you advice, you give advice to your friend every day, you speak with your friend on the telephone, and always you give advice, you give a suggestion. So of course it's a very, very big part of English. Suggestions are a massive part of English, and giving advice is also a massive part of English. First example is you should send an email. So this sentence, do you think it's a suggestion or you think it's advice? I think maybe it's two. It's a suggestion and it's advice as well. So they're very similar. And the subject is you. Should is the modal. Send is the next verb. And the big, big, big rule is after the first modal verb, the next verb, we eliminate two. So always after the next modal verb, we eliminate and we remove the preposition to. Can go, could go, may go, correct, 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 may to go, incorrect, should to go, no, must to go, no. So after the modal, we remove to, always, except have to or ought to. Okay, so you should send an email is advice and recommendation or you shouldn't go by train is also advice or recommendation but it's very important with the word advice to know the difference between the verb and the noun okay so let me show you the verb is with the s to advise and this is the verb very very typical with the s and the noun is with the C advice. So that's very important, the difference between the verb with the S and the noun or the substantive with the C. Okay, so the verb is, the pronunciation is different as well. The verb to advise and the noun is advice. So normally we give advice or the verb to advise. So there are the two examples. Next, it's possible to use could also to make positive suggestions and in this sentence it's possible you could send an email and that's more of a suggestion should is more a recommendation and advice this is stronger you should send an email it's it's a good idea it's my advice i think it's necessary i think but could is a suggestion but it's more optional. And that's the difference between modal verbs, suggestions, optional, obligation, advice. So let's continue with the next example. We could meet at the weekend. This is a suggestion and it's positive. We could meet at the weekend, but it's more optional. It's a possibility. Really, it's a possibility. It's possible. And if you say should, it's more sense of recommendation, obligation, a sense. Obviously not, because must is obligation, but should is advice, recommendation. So there's a scale. What is very strong, recommendation, what is suggestion, what is possible, probable. So there's a, there's a scale that a lot of these sentences are on. Next, you could eat out tonight. And this is an option. It's a possibility. 
but also it's a suggestion. You could eat out tonight. It's a suggestion. It's a possibility. If you say you should, we should eat out tonight, it's more encouragement. It's more forcing a little and it's pushing you a little. So could is definitely just open possibility. Okay, let's continue to level intermediate. We can use conditionals. Remember, conditionals are very, very complicated. In the theory for the conditionals are very difficult. So it's possible to use conditionals to give advice. Okay, and the conditional here is Dan will help if you ask him. And this is a, a advice. Dan will help you if you ask him. That's my advice to you. I'm suggesting, I'm recommending. So they're all very, very similar area here. The past tenses are more polite. So Dan would help you if you asked him. So this is more or less exactly the same compared to this sentence, except the second sentence is the past. And this is considered a little more polite. So Dan would help you if you asked him. And that's very, very advanced, but very interesting. OK, let's try the questions here. Put the words and expressions in the correct order to make suggestions. Hmm. You coffee drink shouldn't after in the evening six. Obviously, the last part is the full stop. The full stop is the last part. Let's put that here. The first part, obviously, is the word with the capital letter. And the capital letter is you. This is the subject. Naturally, in English, we have a subject and a verb. What is the verb? The verb is the modal verb shouldn't and also drink but always the modal is in the first position and shouldn't is for recommendation or advice in the negative so you should not it's my advice it's my recommendation drink is the next verb suggestion what drink tea drink water drink a liquid drink coffee so you should not drink coffee it's my suggestion and my recommendation recommendation after six in the evening so you should not drink coffee after six in the evening because you will not sleep that's my suggestion and for this reason we say shouldn't okay let's continue to the next sentence we have a lot of exercises here ask him a lift if you i'm sure give us will your dad the last word is the full stop ask him the first word is the capital letter the verb to be i am sure i am certain what I am certain your dad okay is the subject the verb is to give plus will so it's the future the modal will give give you give me give him is the object pronoun I'm certain I'm sure your dad will give us a lift you remember a lift is when you bring a person from one place to another location if you ask him it's a conditional more polite ask in the past so i'm sure your dad will give us a lift if you asked him is more polite way to say that exercise three a doctor those headaches should see about of his pete last part is the full stop of his first word is the capital letter pete is the subject he next we have a verb what is the verb see and should modal should always is in the first position it's recommendation, it's advice, it's suggestion. Next verb, see. See what? See a doctor. Basically, visit the doctor. So Pete should see a doctor. It's a suggestion. It's a recommendation. It's advice about those headaches of his. For me, that fits very, very well, and that's very comfortable. Next, a pizza you could order. You're hungry if. Full stop last word hungry first one you capital letter next is the verb after the subject we have the verb the verb is could and order modal verb is could so this is in the first position second position is order you could order what order a drink order a book order a pizza conditional if you are hungry 
So this is a possibility. It's an option. You could order a pizza if you're hungry, if you want. Next, very long. Cut onions, won't they? Your eyes, you sting if underwater. Your eyes is the last part. The first part is the capital letter, if. Now we have probably the subject, and the subject is you and they. Okay, so if it's possible you or it's possible they, let's suggest you. If you, what is the next verb? The next verb is sting, like the bee stings, or cut is another verb. So if you cut onions, um, huh. Let me see. If you cut onions underwater, okay, yeah, it's difficult, but we must calculate and think of all the possibilities. So if you cut on onions underwater, they represents the onions, verb, and the auxiliary will not sting your eyes. That is logical because normally the onion stings your eyes when you have the onion, but if you cut the onion under the water, you don't have this problem. Okay, let's continue. Shouldn't the funeral to work until you after come back? Funeral is the last word with the full stop. First word is the capital. You with the subject, so the next is the verb, and the verb is shouldn't, or to work, or come back. So we have three types of verbs. The first one normally is the modal verb, you should not. This is advice, recommendation, suggestion, return or work. To work is not possible because after the modal, always we eliminate to. For this reason, to work is not possible in this position. Therefore, the next verb has to be come back. You should not come back to work until after the funeral logical correct i think that is a recommendation that is a suggestion that is advice as well four more if to do some sightseeing a good day wanted sunday would be you last part a good day full stop first part capital letter sunday sunday normally has a capital letter anyway because it's a day but i think it's the only word with a capital letter so it's the start of the sentence subject sunday verb Wanted to do would be, we have three verbs and the conditional, or sorry, the modal is normally the first verb. So Sunday would be, um, phew, interesting, sorry, so we return because if is also the capital letter. I did not see the capital letter if. So if plus the subject, if you plus the verb wanted would be sightseeing so i think wanted is better if you wanted to do some sightseeing sunday subject would be a good day i think that's the only logical combination it's the only logical possibility for the sentence sightseeing is like tourism when you visit different places you go sightseeing or you visit the sites so there's different structures to ex express the same thing for example to go sight seeing, to sight see alters a verb, to do, um, sorry, to see the sight, or <laughs> in fact, there's two possibilities. You could see the sight or you could see the sight. Basically, pr pronunciation is the same, but the sights are the things you see and the sights are the locations. So very interesting. Okay, I think that's the correct answer. Three more. Next. And here, we, a new flat, think about should definitely moving to. The last word is a new flat. The first word is the capital we. The next is the verb and should think about moving to. We have three types of verbs. I think the modal is more appropriate because it's just one subject. You should what? You should think about what? Moving to or definitely. You should think about the... I think the position of definitely is here. You should definitely think about moving to a new flat. That's my opinion. Of course, it's a good opportunity for you to practice as well in the comments if you want. And I think that's good. Next.
you would wait it much less for those shoes clay if you until january sales so the last word is until the january sales the first word is the capital letter u this is the subject so the next part is the verb would waited pay so we have three verbs and i think the modal or the conditional is normally first you would next verb waited pay because it's the infinitive you would pay what for the shoes maybe but you would pay much less for the shoes conditional if you waited until the january sales for me that's the most logical structure i don't know if you have the same opinion and let's continue to the last question look after is a phrasal verb to take care your parents we could for the weekend ask the kids to last one is for the weekend first word is we subject and next we have the verb the verb is look after or the verb is could and the modal verb is typically first so you could look after you could take care of what your parents maybe or the kids we could take we could look after the kids <sighs> sorry okay the other it doesn't make sense so we need to think of the second possibility we could ask your parents to take care of to look after the kids for the weekend okay so we could ask the parents to look after the kids for the weekend and i think that's everything correct i think they are all in my opinion the best answers so let's select the, the finish and see if everything is okay good amazing everything 10 from 10 so that's 100 percent and a little surprise as well so that's very very good next is just repetition so the second exercise is just repetition and revision of the first exercise so it's not necessary for now we can do this later okay so the last part of today's lesson is about obligation so today we're very late it's a very long lesson but we must finish this part because i want to and this is level beginner and we speak about obligations okay so for obligations we use must or need to to say that it is necessary to do something so for an obligation for something that is necessary to do we use the verb must or need to for example you must stop at the red light it's an obligation it's necessary and you need to stop because it's the modal must the next verb we remove to okay so we we eliminate to because it's after the modal next the exception is needs to of course so with the modal verb needs to of course it's possible and necessary the preposition to but the other modal verbs there's no to okay next everyone needs to bring something to eat this is the same as everyone must bring something to eat so everyone needs to bring something to eat it's necessary it's an obligation and that's very important the subject everyone needs to obligation necessary must obligation necessary sentence three you can wear what you like so can is the modal verb for permission and ability you can wear what you want what you like but you must look neat and tidy must is an obligation it is necessary and it's the same as need to or have to but you must look neat and tidy the adjective is neat and this is very interesting because we can also say for your writing writing is neat and this means your writing is organized it's very clean it's very good quality and you dress neatly this means you dress very well very clean very tidy very organized as well so you must appear neat and tidy very organized very clean in in terms of your appearance and very respectful a little respectful okay next the negative we use mustn't for prohibitions and it's necessary not to do something so for prohibitions and for something's necessary not to do we use mustn't for example 
you mustn't make any noise in the library it's prohibited and it's necessary not to do it so you mustn't because it's the negative you mustn't make any noise and also the structure is to make noise of course the difference between to do and to make is very very important so in relation to noise it's very typical to make noise okay so you mustn't make noise any noise absolutely no noise in the library because it's prohibited and it's necessary not to do it next you mustn't say anything to her it's a surprise it's a prohibition to speak to her about the party it's necessary not to speak to her about the party anything is correct because the verb is negative if if the verb is affirmative this word becomes nothing you must so for example you must say nothing to her is the same significance you mustn't say anything to her also the preposition to is connected to the verb to say say to say to say to it's a surprise next we use had to positive and couldn't negative if we're talking about the past obligations something that's necessary in the past we use must in the present or need to but in the past we say had to and couldn't for the negative so for example everyone had to bring something to eat this is the past obligation everyone needed to bring something to eat and for me it's okay needed to is also possible I don't see the problem with needed to bring something to eat. You couldn't make noise in the library. This means it was prohibited in the past to make the noise in the library. Let's check the questions. Okay, we have eight questions very, very quickly because the time is very long. Choose the correct expression to complete the sentence. You something visit your aunt while you're here. She's always asking about you. So she wants you to visit so probably it's an obligation and it's the present you are here so you must okay very very quickly next i have reserved the hotel for two nights i something give them my credit card number so whew, interesting i must give them my credit card number in the present but this is the past so i think had to yes i think that's probably just a little more appropriate i had to but must is very possible, but I think more appropriate is had to. Next, when I was a child in the past, we, my friends, watched television except at the weekend, so probably prohibition. And for prohibition, we could not in the past. Okay, very quickly. Number four, again, smoke in here, probably prohibition. And it's the future you will set off this means to start the fire alarm so it's the present um, and I think mustn't you mustn't smoke in here it's prohibit prohibited it's not possible let's continue when I was at school we something stand up whenever a teacher came into the room so almost an obligation and it was necessary in the past we had to positive we had to obligation necessary in the past and positive next children in the plural run inside the school building they must walk at all times so it's prohibited to run in the present so children mustn't run inside the building yes it's prohibited okay two more you can sleep here tonight you have permission but you something leave tomorrow it's an obligation and necessary to leave tomorrow so you must leave tomorrow final option in roman times ordinary people wear purple clothes so obviously it's the past and the verb is wear ordinary people um oof, is it a prohibition or it's an obligation i'd suggest positive had to wear purple clothes let's suggest it's positive okay it's possible i have some mistakes of course let's select the answers seven from eight so i think the roman clothes is a misunderstanding with the context so probably it was prohibited because they were ordinary people and the 
the emperors and the important people wore purple. Okay, so the answer here is show the answers couldn't so it's a prohibition in the past okay fantastic so that's the lesson for today and that was related to obligations and also suggestions very very important lesson today very fast but grammar is very important of course to study you must obligation you must read your grammar regularly and i think this website is fantastic to study your grammar so i hope this lesson helps I hope this lesson was interesting and um, thank you so much for watching live. Thank you for watching recorded. Thank you for your comments. And if you have a question, please put your question in the Facebook chat and I can answer any questions that you have or maybe you can speak to each other as well in that way. My schedule is here and you can see my schedule for this week. Very similar. So today we do IELTS in 15 minutes. I'm a little late. But today we do IELTS lesson and later some speaking corrections as well. If you want to advertise as a company, you can contact me to advertise your business during this lesson. If you want to support me, you can make a transfer or a subscription or a donation with my bank details or PayPal as well. And if you are a company, you can advertise your company and business and school during this lesson if you want. And that's a very good way to support my project as well. Contact. <clears throat> if you want to contact me, you can see all the information here on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest, and WhatsApp. And I think that's everything for today. So thank you so much. I hope that you have a very good day. And thank you so much for watching. So leave your comment, leave your question, and I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson. Thank you so much and have a great day and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.